the recording yeah welcome to bhakti sangha chepa conference call today we are very fortunate to have his holiness chandra mouli swami maharaj to enlighten us on topic shrimad bhagavatam fifth canto second chapter 12th verse hari krishna maharaj please accept my humble obeisances all glories to shila prabhupad thank you so much maharaj for joining and giving your valuable time and assistion this morning really we are very very fortunate to have you on the call please take over the call maharaj hari krishna Hare Krishna. So, um, yeah, um, this is the month where Lord Chaitanya appears, and he'll appear on the twenty eighth of this month. So, um, I have one class per week. So, I would like to uh, speak on the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya, starting today and the next two two or three Fridays after until Lord Chaitanya's appearance. Is that okay? Yes, Maharaj. Yeah. So we'll do uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita today. If you can put up the Adi Lila, CC Chaitanya Charitamrita Adi Lila, chapter three, verse forty-nine. Om Gyan Timirandasya Girajana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobi Stam Stapti Tam Yena Bhutale Swayam Bhupa Kadamayam Dadanti Swam Padati Kami One day Ham Shiguru Shiyuta Padakamala Shigurun Vaishnavam Shasi Rupam Sagujatam Sahagana Dragana Tam Bicham Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Sarvaduttam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakam Vitam Sya Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvishesha Sunyavadi Pastyatya de Sitarine Vancha Kalpa, Turu Vizcha, Kripa Sindhu, Vaycha, Petitanam, Pavani Bio, Vaishnava Bio, Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sri Vasati Gaur Bhaktivindam, Ajanu Lambita Bujo, Kanatam Adakso, Sankir, Tanai Pavitaro Kamalaya Takso. Vishwambaro, Vijabaro, Yuga Dharma Palo, Vande Jagatriyakaro, Puruna Avataro, Vande Shri Krishna Chaitanya Nityanando, Sano Vido Guru Daya Pushpan Vanto, Chitta Sando Tamo Nudo, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Rama. So very closely approaching the uh, appearance of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So I wanted to take the opportunity to set the stage for his appearance by keeping his uh, life, teachings, and everything that he made because for us, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is um, our worshipful deity. We worship Krishna through the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It says no one can approach Radha and Krishna in this age unless they come by way of the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And who is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? He is he is Radharani in he is Krishna with Radharani's color. He is Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi, Radhe, Vrindavane Suri, Rikabhanu Suti Devi, Pranamami Hari Priye. His color is molten gold, like the color of Srimati Radharani, but he is Krishna in her mood. So, um, very uh, mysterious incarnation of the Lord, but very, very compassionate and very much. 
uh, inclined to show mercy to anyone who simply chants the holy names of the Lord. So here's one verse from the Srimad Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. It's uh, the external reasons for the Lord's appearance, verse number 49, chapter 3. Suvarna Varno He Mango Varagas Chandanan Gadi Sanyasad Krich Chimam Shanto Nista Shanti Parayanaha. Translation In his early pastimes, he appeared as a householder with a golden complexion. His limbs are beautiful, and his body, smeared with the pulp of sandalwood, seems like molten gold. In his later pastimes, he accepts the sannyas order, and he is equiposed and peaceful. He is the highest abode of peace and devotion, for he silences the impersonalist non-devotees. This is a verse from the Mahabharata Dana Parva Vishnu Sarasya Namstrota. In his commentary, uh, I can't see the next word after commentary. Uh, in his commentary on the Vishnu Sarasya Nam, called the Namam, Namamthar Suda, Sri Baladev Vidyu, Vidya Bhushana, commenting on this verse, asserts that Lord Chaitanya is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, according to the evidence of the Upanishads. He explains that Suvarna Varnam means a golden complexion. He also quotes the Vedic adjunction, Yada Pasya Pasyate Rupma Varnam Karatam Isham Purusham Brahma Yomim. It's from the Mundaka Upanishads 3.1.3. Rupma Varnam Karatam Isham refers to the Supreme Personality of Godhead having as having a complexion of color of molten gold. Purusham means the Supreme Lord and Brahma Yonam indicates that he is the Supreme Brahman. This evidence too proves that Lord Chaitanya is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna. Another meaning of the description of the Lord as having a golden hue is that Lord Chaitanya personal, personality is as fascinating as gold is attractive. Srila Baladev Vidyabhushana has explained that the word var Varnaga means exquisitely beautiful. Lord Chaitanya accepted sannyas, leaving aside his household life to preach his mission. He has equanimity in different senses. First, he describes the confidential truth of the personality of Godhead. And second, he satisfies everyone by knowledge and attachment to Krishna. He is peaceful because he renounces all topics not related to the service of Krishna. Srila Baladev Vidya Bhushana has explained that the word Nishta indicates his being rigidly fixed in chanting of the holy names of Sri Krishna. Lord Chaitanya subdued all disturbing opponents of devotional service, especially the monists who are actually inverse to the personal feature of the Supreme Lord. Okay. So Lord Chaitanya is, as is described here and confirmed by the authorities, he is Krishna. And he's appeared in a particular manifestation to show mercy. Um, the Lord is always concerned about the upliftment of the conditioned souls in the material realm. And therefore, he makes many plans and efforts to bring the conditioned souls back to him in loving devotional service. According to the age, a particular type of dharma or religious process is given in order to uplift the conditioned souls. The more degraded and materialistic the age is, the more compassion is given, or the more the process becomes, what we say, easily available. There are four ages. 
Satya Yuga, Treta Yuga, Dwapara Yuga, and Kali Yuga. We are now in the Kali Yuga. In the Satya Yuga, because of the longevity of life, meditation on the Lord within the heart for an extended period of time was the means for self-realization. In the Treta Yuga, the means for self-realization was very costly Vedic sacrifices using much material wealth such as gold, jewels, grains, ghee, and many other things in sacrifice in the Agni Hotra, the fire sacrifice of the Lord with Brahmins chanting perfect mantras in order to invoke the presence of the Lord within the Yajna. In the Dwapara Yuga, very exquisite and very, very high class deity worship was the means for self-realization. Now all those means for self-realizations are available in Kali Yuga, but they are not the Yuga Dharma because people cannot practice these rigid forms of austerities in terms of worshiping the Lord in this particular age. We are not qualified. And the age is bad, and therefore the age is degraded because of the materialistic uh, realm where people have no idea of God and are always looking towards material life for satisfaction. Therefore, people are somewhat lost in this age. We might say not lost, but completely lost because they don't know what their best interest is. And even when they hear it, they can't understand it or they can't even accept it. So therefore the scripture says, Palyeno apayesa sabda kolon yuge jasmin janaha. Manda sumata matayo manyabhaga upadrataha. And in this age, people are not qualified. And they're always making mistakes. They, if they try for spirituality, they always get cheated by getting a cheater as a guru. Unlucky, misguided. And the last word is upadrataha means their minds are always disturbed. This is the nature of this age. People are always in, in anxiety. Anxiety goes on as the mood of consciousness in this age. People are full with anxiety. And sometimes that anxiety becomes so much, it becomes depression and uh, what we say, tremendous amounts of fear. So this is the age, therefore it's very hard for people to qualify themselves to a spiritual process. Therefore the Lord knowing the disqualifications of people in this age has made the process easy and direct. And that is to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. So the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna appearing again in a different form to Sa Krishna, as the verse says, Krishna Varnam, Tusa Krishna. Tusa means he's not blackish. He's uh, Tusa Krishna, Sango Panga, Saparshadam. Yagyai Sankirtanai Prayai Yajantihi Sumeda Saha. So he delivers not only by giving, but, but also by practicing the Yuga Dharma himself, which is the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Um, when Krishna was personally here 5,000 years ago, which was the very end of the previous age, the Pura Yuga, Krishna. Uh, spoke the Bhagavad Gita to Arjuna. And then he concluded towards the very end of the Bhagavad Gita that after hearing everything, now the process is to surrender. Um, of course, he gave Arjuna the option to choose 
But he's telling us that ultimately, in order to get the benefit of spiritual practice, one has to surrender to the Lord. In other words, one has to give up any, on, any other idea how one can be happy or any idea how one can make progress in life and accept the directions of the Lord as the only way. Now, because Krishna said that after speaking to Bhagavad Gita, um, he reflected after that and he was thinking, I think I made the process too hard because not too many people are coming, or hardly any are coming. So thinking in that way and knowing about the age of Kali, which was upcoming, he uh, prepared himself to advent himself again in his Namo Mahavadanaya Krishna Prema Padayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namadi Goda Triste Namaha. Namo Maha Vandanaya. He is the most magnanimous, merciful incarnation of the Lord because he doesn't ask anything. He doesn't say surrender. He says simply chant, and when you feel happy, dance and take nice foodstuffs offered to the Lord in devotion. This is the process in this age. Shravanam, Kirtanam, and uh, prashad hearing chanting dancing and taking krishna prasad and if, if you're inclined to philosophy read books about the nature of god about the nature of the supreme lord about your relationship with the lord so these are the processes that are given in this age because people are unqualified to practice spiritual life as is explained both in the Bhagavatam and throughout the scriptures, because this age of Kali, especially if you go to the 12th canto of Bhagavatam, you'll see, you'll read how this age is becoming more and more degraded as time goes on. And as Prabhupada says, at the end of this age, uh, after so many thousands of years, people, if somebody lives to 25 or 30 years old, they will consider to be a grand old person. 30 years old would be like an old man. So the age will simply continue to go down, but in Lord, in Lord Chaitanya reversed the process because he is God himself and he can do that. So he predicted in this age, after his appearance, which was 400, 530, what are we, 35 years ago, it'll be 535 on March 28th this month, he predicted that um, there will be a golden age within this degraded age of Kali. And that golden age will be for 10,000 years starting with his appearance. So we are already 500 and some years into that golden age. And for the next 500 and some years, the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and devotion to the Lord will increase. It'll continue to increase, although the dem demons will increase, gradually they will be pushed out by the increase of the Sankirtan movement. And for 5,000 years, Starting 500 years ago, Lord Chaitanya's mission of spreading his, his mercy through the Sankirtan movement, chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, will spread for the next 5,000 years. After that 5,000 year period, it will start to gradually decline. And after another 5,000 years, it will be gone. So here, those of us who are pr physically present now, Here's a chance to go back home, back to Godhead. A great chance. In this particular time period, we have, we have a lot of mercy available. And so if we fail to take advantage of it, we might miss the opportunity and have to stay and take birth again in Kali Yuga and uh, go through the difficulties of Kali Yuga. 
the Lord Chaitanya made it easy, direct, and simple. And here, in this verse, we're getting a little bit about his life. It says in the early part of his life, of course, he was a scholar. He was known as Nimai Pandit, the great scholar of Nadia, scholar in uh, Nayak and logic. And he was so brilliant that he could speak on any subject and defeat any opponent. <clears throat> After some time, he uh, met his spiritual master, Ishwar Puri, and had his life completely changed. He took initiation from Ishwar Puri and he became Krishna Chaitanya. And after that, he started to spread the Sankirtan movement throughout Navadweep. And then at one point in his life, I believe at the age of 20, he, he, he got married. As it says here, he entered into the household ashram. And it's described here not only uh, something about his physical appearance, the word suvarna, suvarna means gold, and varna, suvarna varna means having the color of gold. Hemanga, whose body was like molten gold. Varna Anga, having a most beautiful body. Chandra Angani, whose body was smeared with sandalwood. So all these descriptions that are mentioned in this particular verse uh, is describing his transcendental features like that. So here, it's also described, I think you just put up a, the verse I quoted earlier, about Krishna Varna. So I didn't give you the translation, but the translation in this particular verse is very interesting because it says, Yadnai Sankirtanai Prayai. Uh, in the Yagya, Yadnai means sacrifice, and Sankirtan Prayai consisting chiefly of congregational service, congregational chanting. So this is the service in this age to the Lord to chant his holy name. And those who are Sumedasa, who have good intelligence, will take it up. <laughs> those who have Alpamedasa, Alpa means meager, intelligence will not be able to recognize it or even take it up. <laughs> so this is the Lord. He is Twish, Twish, Twisa. He is uh, Krishna Varnam Twisa Krishna. Akarsanam, he's not black, he's golden. So these are identifications of Lord Chaitanya's appearance in this age, which are very important to understand because we find, especially those persons who grew up in India, they don't have a working knowledge of Lord Chaitanya. I guess if you're not from Bengal, you probably would have to really become fortunate to learn about Lord Chaitanya. Although, when he was personally here, he spread the Sankirtan movement throughout the entire subcontinent of India, all the way down to Cape Comoran. He visited the Adikeshiva Temple in Kerala and also the Padmanabh Temple, also in the area of Kala, in Kerala also. So the Lord not only appeared in Bengal, lived in Jagannath Puri for 18 years, but traveled six years throughout the entire continent of, of spreading the Sankirtan movement. So in his early age, he was a, a pundit, and then he, he, he entered into household life. He was married to Vishnu Priya. Previous to his marriage with Vishnu Priya, he married Lakshmi Priya. Lakshmi Priya died very soon after the marriage in separation when the Lord went to East Bengal to do some preaching. She, um, she couldn't take the separation and left her body. When the Lord returned, he learned about the fate of his wife. His mother was unhappy, but she arranged for another marriage and then he married Vishnu Priya. And that's a wonderful story. If you want to hear about that marriage, those of you who like hearing about marriages, and I think some of you might also find that interesting. Please read Chaitanya Mangala by Lochan Das Thakur. In that book, he describes page after page after page, practically a whole chapter describing uh, all the details of Lord Chaitanya's marriage to Vishnu Priya, 
which was which was made in the spiritual world, although it appeared in Navadweep. <laughs> uh, so these are the, some of the uh, qualities, characteristics, and activities of Lord Chaitanya. Now, um, the next verse, after the one we were just reading, verse number 50, could you place that up on the, uh, yeah, uh, Three, I think it's five zero. Yeah. Yeah. Vyakta Kari Bhagavate Kahi Bara Bara Kali Yuga Dharma Nama Sankirtana Sara. In Srimad Bhagavatam, it is repeatedly and clearly said that the essence of religion in the age of Kali is chanting of the holy name of Krishna. So here we get an indication of the essence of religion. And sometimes people think it's too simple or it's just, how is it possible that just by chanting these prayers to the Lord, one is doing the highest form of spiritual worship, but that is the mercy of the Lord. And of course, we have to practice our chanting Therefore, before we proceed to chant, we always chant Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita, Gadadara, Sri Vas, Adigor Bhaktarinda. We take shelter, we take mercy from the Panchatattva by glorifying them, and then we proceed to our chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And that sets the stage to the auspiciousness because, as we mentioned, no one can approach Krishna in this age without approaching Krishna in the form of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is not only Krishna, but he has Radharani's nature, and the absolute truth is known as Radha and Krishna. These two make up the absolute truth the supreme energy and the supreme source of energy, Krishna and Radharani. Is, is, she is his internal energy. So on the altars, we see, in many of our temples, we see the deities of Radha and Krishna. But in some altars, especially in Sri Mayapur and in uh, Hungary, you'll see right near the same deity of Radha and Krishna, you'll see a deity of Lord Chaitanya. You won't see Lord Nityananda there. You'll just see Lord Chaitanya. And because Lord Chaitanya is non-different than Radha and Krishna. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Radha Krishna Nohi Onya. So therefore, he is not an avatar, but he is avatar E. Avatar E means the source of all avatars because he appears as an avatar, but he is the source of all the avatars at the same time. And he has the mood of a devotee. He teaches the process of worshiping himself from the position of his own devotee. Srila Prabhupada would say, when the student takes the position, I mean, I'm sorry, when the teacher takes the position of the student, to teach the student how to, to do the lessons for the teacher, that is the best teaching. So Lord Chaitanya taught by example in the process of worshiping the Lord in pure devotional service. Of course, we can't imitate him, but the knowledge that he has given us through the Sankirtan movement and through his devotees, which were his followers, the writings of the six Goswamis of Sri Vrindavan, which are the which are the essence of the teachings of Lord Chaitanya and Radha Krishna. Um, there we find all everything that that is required for execution of pure devotional service. So um, Lord Chaitanya is our worshipful deity. He is the most manifested, he is the most merciful manifestation of Krishna ever. Um, he is Chana avatar. There's one verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam. Um, 
Can you put that verse up? It's the um, sixth canto. Hmm, let me see if I can remember it. Sixth canto. Um, hmm. Can't think of the verse now. Uh, six canto chapter. Hmm. Let me see. Let me let me look at the different chapters in the six canto. Um, Uh, no, I think it's the, uh, I think it's the, uh, it's, let's go to the fifth chapter. <laughs> and, uh, fifth canto, I'm sorry, fifth canto. Yeah. Yeah, I'm in the wrong canto, fifth canto. And um, we'll go to chapter number, uh, let's see. Chapter Chapter Eighteen. And try verse number thirty-five. Let's see if I'm right. I have to go to four thirty-five. Yeah, this is it. Verse 35, uh, 18. Whoops, you passed it up, I think. I saw it before. Now what happened? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, go down, go down the page to the translation. Okay, so we offer our respectful obeisance to you as the gigantic person simply by chanting your name we shall be able to fully understand to understand you fully you are yagya sacrifice you are kratya ritual therefore you are the ritualistic ceremonies of sacrifice are part of your body and you are the only enjoyer of sacrifice your form is composed of transcendental goodness and you are known as tri yuga because in Kali Yuga, you appear as a concealed incarnation and because you are always fully possessed the three pairs of opulences. So go down the page and you'll see. So it says in the age of Kali, the Supreme Personality of Godhead does not appear as a Leela avatar, an incarnation to display pastimes. Therefore, he is known as Tri Yuga. Unlike other incarnations, Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appears in the sage of Kali as a devotee, and he is called a concealed incarnation's Chana avatar. Mm -hmm. So there is the confirmation that Lord Chaitanya appears in this age, but not as, a, uh, not as the Lord, but as the devotee of the Lord. Therefore, he's called Tri Yuga, Three means three, and it means in three yuga, he appears as the Lord. In the fourth Kali Yuga, he doesn't, he appears as his own devotee. That is, that is a good part of the reason why people don't understand Lord Chaitanya, don't even acknowledge him as the Supreme Lord. Therefore, it wasn't until Srila Prabhupada brought the teachings of Lord Chaitanya actually based on the teachings that he received from Bhakti Thakur to the West, do we have information that only 535 years ago, the Supreme Lord appeared on the surface of this earth to perform his pastimes. Now that is very, very near. Only 535 years ago, the Lord personally walked on the face of the earth and transformed millions of people to devotees of the Lord. 
So we get a little indication from these verses of the position of Lord Chaitanya. So I'll stop there and see if there's any discussion or questions related. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much for the beautiful class. Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna, dear devotees, please go ahead for the questions and realizations. Thank you. Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. So thank you so very much for the beautiful class today. Um, I wanted to ask about, um, the, we're in the golden age of this Kali Yuga. And I, I always have a little bit of confusion about, I know that it lasts 10,000 years and then things will only be better for the 10,000 years of the golden age and then start to decline again? Or how exactly does that work? Well, then we mentioned that for the next 5,000 years, there will be a, a continuous increase in the uh, process of glorifying the Lord through chanting the holy name. So as Lord Chaitanya predicted, he predicted himself that the entire world will be, will be uh, well, he said in every town and village. He didn't mean just India, but he meant the whole world. Uh, there will be the chanting of the Lord's name. So that'll go on and can increase for 5,000 more years. You may see, well, you may, we may not see because we might not be around, but we may know that that 5,000 years going upward there will be some ups and downs in that, but there'll but there'll be a steadily moving of the. After five thousand years of Lord Chaitanya's mission, then it'll start to decline, and then it'll and then for the next five thousand years, it will go down until it's completely gone, and then Kali Yuga will come back in full force. <laughs> And you can read from the 12th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam and even parts of the 11th canto, some of the symptoms of this age, which is already showing signs. So um, yeah, and the material world is like that. It's not a place where you can hang out and expect to enjoy here. <laughs> it's a place where you, you know, you make your business you get out and go back to the spiritual world that's that's where we belong we somehow we came here we're here now we gotta do what we have to do to return to our real home in the spiritual world so lord Chaitanya has made the process available to each and every one qualifications or no qualifications simply chanting dancing, feasting on Krishna Prashadam and developing, you know, the proper mood of a Vaishnava. In other words, developing the qualities of a Vaishnava, which comes through the process of hearing and chanting. So, yeah. So the idea, what Prabhupada would always admonish us, you know, try to finish up in this life don't come back because it may not be so easy after Lord Chaitanya's mission. Thank you, Maharaj. Is yes. that okay? Yes, it is. And it helps me feel even more of a sense of urgency, not just for myself, but to help others let's all get out of here, <laughs> you know, within the next 5,000 years. <laughs> well, even sooner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah. Yeah, we can make it in one lifetime, but the most we can make two lifetimes, we can get back to that. 
Thank you. Give me your cat, he can make it too. <laughs> yes, I think he wants to. I think he's trying. <laughs> he's right he's right behind you. <laughs> yeah, he's coming for association. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj, this is Kamadi Kasi. Uh, um, Lord Chaitanya comes every time, every Kali Yuga, and he no. is uh, it's also no. available. This no, process. he comes. He comes once in every one thousand Kali Yugas. One thousand Kali Yuga. Yeah, he comes only once in one in every one thousand Kali Yugas. That means. After four billion three hundred million years, the Lord appears. So it's in, it's interesting. We just happen to be, you know, present at that particular time, this Kali Yuga. But after this, as the cycles go, Satya Yuga, Trita Yuga, Dukhara Yuga, Kali Yuga, that'll continue for another nine hundred and ninety-nine rotations of the four yugas. And after that, after the then the thousandth one, Lord Chaitanya will appear again. So yeah, he doesn't even come, and therefore the door to Vaikuntha, or the door to the door to Vrindavan, is not available in the other nine hundred ninety nine. One can only make it to Vaikuntha in the other nine hundred ninety nine. Vrindavan is not available. And that's the special mercy of Lord Chaitanya because he is Radha and Krishna. So, yeah, Hare Krishna mantra is available in all the Kali Yuga? Um, no, the worship of Narayan is the means for self-realization in the other 999. There is an incarnation called Gaur Narayan. A golden Narayan form appears in the other 999 ages, 999 Kali Yugas. He teaches the methods to reach the Vaikuntha planets, not Goloka Vrindavan. It's called Gaur Narayan. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Maharaj. Very, very wonderful. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Ananta Koti Dandar Pranam, Prabhupada, Celebrate Hare Krishna. Kishi Radha Kati Mahati Ji. Thank you for your attention so much. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Tandvat Pranam, all glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to Your Holiness. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for such a wonderful class and uh, for explaining the position of uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and preparing us for uh, his appearance day. Um, I, I was just uh, wondering, and I think uh, you answered the question while answering Kaumudaki Mataji's uh, question too. Um, I was just wondering how the people in the other yugas uh, ever understood that uh, Krishna is the supreme lord and Krishna is our ultimate goal because uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came and he explained it very clearly to the people in this Kali Yuga. Uh, but before that, how did they know? Oh, you mean in the in the other ages? Such a yuga? Yeah, in the previous ages, and also now you were mentioning that in the like he comes once in thousand, you know, uh, kali yugas. Hmm. So yeah, well, in the previous ages there is an incarnation. In the yeah, even Krishna comes once in once in a thousand kali yugas too. He, he comes at the end of the Dwar, Dwapara yuga every thousand Kali Yugas, and then he speaks to Bhagavad Gita. Uh, in the previous 
ages, Satya Yuga, Treta Yuga, Duparva Yuga, there are different incarnations. In the age of Satya Yuga, the incarnation is Kapila Dev, the one who spoke to his mother Devahuti. He's called the white incarnation. Mm -hmm. And then a red incarnation is Yagya. He's that one, you, we have to do a little research on Yagya because he's not so much known. And, and then in Dwarpa Yuga, I'm not sure who the incarnations is. But there's a lot of manifestations of the Lord's incarnations who appear in these different Yugas. Although they're not the prime incarnation for spreading the Yuga Dharma, they come to perform their various pastimes. So the Vedic scriptures are eternal and they're available. And again, in previous ages, people were more spiritually inclined. In this age, people are not so spiritually inclined. That's why what we have now is books. Before there was no books, or there was some writings, but most people were hermetically inclined and could understand and remember spiritual life, spiritual philosophy, the practice of spirituality. So the Lord is always providing, you know, various types of, because there's Manvantar avatars, there's the Leela avatars, there's the Guna avatars, there's the Shaktivesha avatars, and there's the, what else? The uh, Purusha avatars. There's six forms of avatars that the Lord appears in. And these happen throughout all the ages, not just, you know, not just in Kali Yuga. They happen throughout all of the ages. So the Lord always provides, but to get to Vrindavan, the boat of Krishna in the spiritual world, Goloka Vrindavan where Krishna appears in his pure essential form as the beautiful boy in Vrindavan, it's not, it's not so easily available in the previous ages. In this age, it's more readily available because of Lord Chaitanya. But scripture is always there and people know, knew about Krishna and Vrindavan. But the Yuga Dharma was different. Thank you so much, Maharaj. And also thank you for always quoting and making us look through the scriptures also. Uh, you always cite instances from each and every scripture. So then uh, we understand where it is coming from, what you're actually explaining from. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, yeah. That's our process. <laughs> Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and all glories to your lotus feet. Um, Guru Maharaj, can I ask a question, please? Mm. Yeah. What is the difference between Vaikuntha and Vrindavan? Uh, the mood of worship is the is difference. Mm -hmm. um, there are five what they call rasas or moods where one can worship Krishna in. Neutrality, servitorship, friendship, parental affection, conjugal love. Um, in Vaikuntha, there is only neutrality, dasya, uh, servitorship, and friendship where Krishna is in a superior position. There's, so there's two and a half rasas that are available in Vaikuntha. In Vrindavan, all five rasas are there. But one can worship Krishna as a friend in a superior position. One can become the mother of Krishna, the father of Krishna, the, uh, the 
In other words, one can be a relative of Krishna and worship Krishna as their son, as their nephew, or as the gopas in Vrindavan would worship Krishna, even though they weren't related to Krishna directly, still they considered Krishna their son and worshiped him just like they would worship, just like they would serve their own sons. And then conjugal love, that is the amorous loving relationships between Krishna and the gopis, headed by Srimati Radharani. And there's two aspects to that, it's called Swakya Ras and Parakya Ras. That means uh, loving Krishna as husband and wife and loving Krishna as uh, lover and beloved without formal uh, vows. So that's only available in Vrindavan. In Vaikuntha, you can go as high as friendship in a marginal sense of the term. In other words, friendship for Krishna is the superior and you are the inferior in that friendship relationship. But in Vaikuntha, people worship Krishna as master. Just like when we do our deity worship in the temples, we see Krishna, we bow down to Krishna, we pray to Krishna, we're in the mood of Vaikuntha. We're not exhibiting the mood of Vrindavan in our day-to-day -day life with Krishna. That comes only on, on the higher platforms of devotion. Because in, in, uh, in Vrindavan, you know, Krishna is not seen as the Supreme Lord. He's seen as simply as the most attractive personality. And people love him and serve him in different ways. So yeah, that's what Lord Chaitanya is teaching the Vrindavan mood. There's a beautiful verse from the Chaitanya Manjusa. It's a very obscure scripture. It's called the Chaitanya Manjusa. Let me see. I think I have it on my... Um, um, I'll take a look and see if I can find that verse from the Chaitanya Manjusa. It's a beautiful verse describing uh, Lord Chaitanya's mission and mood and the mood of Vrindavan. Let's see if I can find it. Okay, it's Chaitanya Mata Manjusa. And this is a verse very often quoted by Srila Prabhupada. Aradana Bhagavan Rajesa Tanayasta Dharma Vrindavan Ramya Kashi Rupasana Rajavadu Vagena Ja Rugena Val Kalpita Srimad Bhagavatam Purana Amalam Prema Pumarta Mahan Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Mata Idam Tata Dharam Naparaha uh -huh. And this verse is broken up into five categories. One should worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the son of Nanda Maharaj, Sri Krishna. Two, Sri Krishna's transcendental abode, Vrindavan, is equally worshipable. Three, the topmost form of worship is worship performed by the gopis of Vrindavan. Four, Srimad Bhagavatam is the spotless Purana. Five, Love of God, prema is the ultimate goal of life. So that's the nature of this verse. This, this is the philosophy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He's teaching these five principles through this one verse. <laughs> if you know this one verse, it's called Chaitanya Mata Manjusa. This is, and this, I read a commentary by one great soul called Srinatha Chakravarti. <laughs> So this is a beautiful, beautiful verse. And, and the description is also there. So this is Lord Chaitanya's mission, these five things. Mm -hmm. Lord, Lord Chaitanya's teachings is these five things. His mission is the Sankirtan. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for explaining it, Guru Maharaj.
That wasn't too hard to understand. Yeah, it made a bit more clearer about the difference between Vaikuntans and Ravan because I think up till now I was just thinking both are same. Up till now is what? I was thinking both of, both the places are same. There is no difference between Vaikuntha and Vrindavan. No, Vrindavan is the topmost abode in the spiritual world. Yeah, Vaikuntha is Vaikuntha is, is the spiritual world, but it's the mood is different. Like Ramachandra, Lord Ramachandra, he's Vaikuntha. The Shringadev, he's Vaikuntha. Practically all of the all the incarnations of the Lord are they have their their planets in Vaikuntha. Mm. If you perfect your love of God of in uh, worshiping Lord Ramachandra, then you go to Ayodhya Dam, which is the highest abode in the Vaikuntha realm. There's a planet where Lord where Lord Ram stays. And one can eternally reside in that planet, worshiping Lord Ram in the mood of the Supreme Lord, in the mood of awe and reverence. So we can't go from Vaikuntha to Vrindavan? Uh, generally, but you can. Hmm. It's possible, but the mood has to change. Mm -hmm. Just like, you know, there's, if you read the Brihad Bhagavatam Rita, it's a beautiful explanation of this same point you just made. Mm -hmm. The story of Gopa Kamara. Okay. Gopa Kamara's relationship with Krishna was in Vrindavan, but he made it to Vaikuntha. But he, although he made it to Vaikuntha and was feeling happy there, he still felt some dissatisfaction because he hadn't reached his na natural relationship with Krishna in Vrindavan. Therefore, he had to leave Vaikuntha, go back down to the material world in Boma Vrindavan, practice again, and then elevate himself to uh, Vrindavan. So we, we highly suggest and recommend people read the Brihad Bhagavatam Rita. It's a beautiful, beautiful story of Gopal Kumar. And it's, it's composed by Sanatana Goswami, but the devotees in ISKCON headed by one of the great, probably the greatest scholar ever to live in ISKCON, Gopi Paranandana. He put together that Brihad Bhagavatam Rita in a very uh, readable way with purports and explanations, beautiful book. It's quite long. There's two sections to it. There's Gopal Kumar's life, and then there's another section about Narada Muni. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Can I follow up on this question about the um, different locas? There's no more questions. We can conclude. Hi, Krishna. Can you hear me? Yeah. Bharat Man Mataji is asking question. Okay. okay. Yeah, I, I wanted to know about the difference in the mood um, between Ayodhya Dham and Mathura. I mean, I know that in Ayodhya, that's the abode of Lord Ram and, and Sita Devi. And in Mathura, there is his form as Krishna. But, you know, they both have, um, you know, in both Dhams, you know, Krishna is in a majestic role, you know. So I was one, but at the same time, I've heard that Mathura is a little more intimate than Ayodhya. So I was wondering in what way, since they're both like majestic, 
you know, I was wondering in what way um, Mathura is more intimate than Ayodhya. Um, well, Krishna was born in Mathura. So sometimes we say Mathura Vrindavan. There, there is a place in, in Goloka where Krishna is worshipped as the Supreme Lord. And that's related to the pastime of Krishna when he rescued his father from the clutches of Varuna. He went down to the abode of Varuna to bring Nanda Maharaj back. After Nanda Maharaj had violated the time for bathing and was captured by the servants of Varuna and taken to Varuna. Uh, then there's a mood. I'm not exactly certain about the on reverence element in Mathura because Mathura is connected to Vrindavan. Krishna was born in Mathura. He grew up in Gokul. And uh, yeah. But it's, it's still more of the, the relationships that he has in Mathura are, um, aren't, aren't they more, a little more formal than they are in Vrindavan? I'm not sure. I don't know. Did you, did you, did you hear something like that? Yeah, I, 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 I've heard that for years, you know. That, you heard um, about it? You know, I, I've heard that the, the, it's, like, it's, like a, it's like the Dhams have like a progressive level of intimacy. Like you have, first you go from Ayodhya to, um, you know, Matura to Vrindavan, like that. Well, okay. Now, where I I would have to, you know, read something to really uh, understand it because Matura sometime Matura has to be a section of the Vrindavan realm and not in the Vaikuntha realm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But Krishna. Okay. So. Krishna was born in Mathura. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I was just wondering about that progression, you know, why why Mathura was, as you said, as I've always heard, that why Mathura is consider, considered, you know, more intimate than Ayodhya. Since, you know, in well, both places, I, he has I, a I, majestic world. I, I, I don't really see the comparison because one is in the realm of awe and reverence and one is in the realm of intimacy. Okay. Okay, Maharaj, thank you. Yeah, you can, uh, maybe you read Prabodhananda Saraswati's prayers to Mathura, you could understand more. Hmm. Yeah, he writes a whole book on the glories of Mathura. Okay. Okay. All right, so uh, we thank you very much and uh, I'll be back next Friday with some more Chaitanya Leela. I'd like to stay on that subject until Gaur Purnima. If the devotees can tolerate it. <laughs> Maharaj, I'm sorry. Hare Krishna, can I ask one question? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay, <laughs> very quickly. Your newsletter, is there a mailing list for it? I, I just saw it recently. Um, mm, well, I don't know. We just, we just released it a couple days ago. It's called Prapannam. Yeah. Um, let's see. The person you would have to contact, her name is 
Shilpa, Shilpa, are you are you here today? Uh, Lavanya, are you here? There must be some of my devotees online here because it's big numbers. Guruvayad, if Tiffany will uh, write up her email in the chat, I can forward it to Lavanya. Thank okay, well, forward. Yeah, we want to we want to forward it to Tiffany, Tiffany, because she's the one that wants it. She, she put her email up on the chat. Sri Devi, just make note of this email and send her a copy. Yes, Guru Maharaj, I'll do it. Okay, thank you. Okay, my obeisances to all the devotees. Hare Krishna, Bancha Kalpa, Anand Krishna 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 Krishna